Hey guys, Tyler here, technical artist at Mintana, and today we're gonna go over how we export our models from SolidWorks to our platform and what are the best practices so that we can get usable results from our platform. So as you can see, we have our diode here and we know if we export this from SolidWorks directly as an STL file, we're not gonna get the best topology. And if we pop into Blender, this is kind of what we get, right? It's not bad, but it could be better and we can do better. So let me show you how to do that. So we're, let's jump back into SolidWorks. We're going to go to Insert, Features, Convert to Mesh Body. Now we're gonna marquee select the asset. <clears throat> and as you can see, we get the similar result to what we had in Blender. Our first option right off the bat is mesh refinement. The, as we slide it to the left, we're gonna get a more coarse result. As we slide it to the right, we're gonna get a more fine result. Please note that this is a RAM hog. So depending on how, how beefy your model is, you can you can eat up tons of, of RAM on your workstation. So for this mesh, I don't want the tessellation on on the on the horizontal aspect or the vertical side, excuse me, of our model. Uh, so I want to try to find something where we're mitigating the the tessellation, and that looks to be as good as we're gonna get it. Let's play around with it a little bit more. Okay, something like that. But we are losing detail on our on our curves, curved surfaces. So now we have maximum, so now we're going to advanced mesh refinement. We have maximum distance deviation and maximum angle def deviation. This is talking about the max deviation that we want to show between our points. So the more you slide it to the right, the more fine tuned and more accurate the model is going to be. And the more you go to the left, that's where you start to introduce a lot more deviation. So for, for this model, we really, again, I, I'm, I'm looking at the tessellation points uh, along the, the, the bigger tube here. Um, and I like something for this mesh. I like something with more deviation just because it, it's giving us some cleaner topology. But as you can see, we're, we're not, we're not getting that detail on the rounded corner. So let's, I like to put something in the middle right there. Uh, and as you can see, we have now captured our, our corner detail there. And we still have the issue, uh, of, we still need more tessellation in the center diode. So this is where we're going to go to define maximum element size. The more you slide it to the left, the bigger um, the, the element sizes, the more you slide it to the right, the, the finer detail that we have. And again, we're just looking to try to get the best possible topology that we can from this tool. Um, so we're gonna drop it down a little bit, something like that is, there you go, something like that is I'm pretty happy with, right? Okay, so once we got, once you've dialed in your settings to where you're happy with, come over here, click the checkbox. Now we have our asset and it's tessellated. We're gonna go to File, Save As. We're gonna save that as an STL. Save it, there it is. Telling us this is how big our asset is and how big the file size is, to po or how, how many tri uh, triangles we have, what file format it's in. We ask us if we wanna do it. We can go All Bodies. All right, now let's go to Blender. So we can take a look at the, at the two versions. We're gonna diode, import it. And as you can see, it's a lot better than what we had before. So I hope this helps guys. Uh, yeah, you guys have a great rest of your day.